Hey, how's it going everybody? So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how you could go right ahead and make any Raspberry Pi into a NAS. So let me go right ahead and show you exactly what you need. Of course, you're gonna need a Raspberry Pi. Uh, this model does have a 128 gig micro SD on it. Of course, you don't need uh, that big of a micro SD. You could go right ahead and use possibly like a 16 gig and that would be more than enough. Now, the other thing you're going to need is a storage device. So for this tutorial, I'm just going to use a regular USB. You could go right ahead and use, you know, an external hard drive or any other drive that you, you know, want to go right ahead and use. OK, so let me go right ahead and load up the operating system on the micro SD. The micro SD is inserted into my computer, so we're going to go ahead and open up the Raspberry Pi imager. With the imager open, let's go ahead and choose the operating system. For this tutorial, we're going to need to technically get the light version of the Raspberry operating system. So I'm going to go ahead and find it right here. So for me, I'm going to go ahead and use the 64 bit operating system since my Raspberry Pi 4 has eight gigs of RAM. So I'm going to go ahead and utilize that. So let's go ahead and click on the Raspberry Pi OS Lite 64 bit. Of course, we're going to go ahead and choose the storage and there's the micro SD. Click on that. And before we actually hit on right, I'm going to go ahead and make a couple of changes here. So let's go ahead and go into the settings portion. OK, now we're in the settings. So I already made a couple of changes. So I enabled, of course, the set host name. So it's going to be Raspberry Pi local. We're going to enable SSH because uh, this is going to make it a lot easier when we're going to go right ahead and basically run a couple of commands. So make sure that you're enabling this. So I already set up a username and password here. So uh, you could go ahead and set that up. And of course, we're setting up uh, the time zone. So there we go. Once you have all of that filled out, just go ahead and hit save. And we're going to go ahead and write to disk. OK, so this message is going to come up. Uh, you know, if you don't have any data there, just go ahead and just basically just delete everything. Just it's going to go ahead and erase everything. So click on yes. So this process will take a couple of minutes. So I'll go ahead and let it do its thing and we'll be right back. OK, so it already finished. So at this point, you could go ahead and click on continue and then you could go ahead and eject the micro SD. Alrighty, so I got everything already connected. I'm going to go ahead and let it boot up. Alrighty, so it looks like the Raspberry Pi is finally booted up. So the next thing I need to do is I need to go ahead and change the IP address to a static IP address. So usually whenever I run a NAS, uh, I always try to technically just use the static IP address and just set it and forget it. So I already know that the machine is going to be always in that set IP address. So let me go ahead and show you how to do that. OK, so let's go ahead and technically find the IP address for this Raspberry Pi. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and do everything on the actual Raspberry Pi. I'm going to go ahead and SSH into it. So let's go ahead and type in the username and password. So Pi. And hit enter and there we go so we are in now the ip address that i'm going to be using to get the the actual ip address is going to be ip space a d d r and then you hit enter and you should let's see you should go right ahead and see on option two ethernet zero that's if you're actually using a wired connection. If you're using the wireless card, then yeah, that would be on the other option at that point. But for us, it's just Ethernet zero. So we're going to go ahead and find the IP address. And I can already see that it's 192.168.1.194. So let me go ahead and SSH into that machine. OK, so there's a couple of ways that you could go ahead and SSH into the Raspberry Pi. So you could go ahead and use the command line or you could technically use PuTTY. But for me, I'm just going to go ahead and use the command line. So let's go ahead and SSH and we're going to hit space and then we're going to do the username, which is Pi and then at and then the IP address. Uh, 194, if I'm not mistaken, hit enter. At this point, it's going to go ahead and try to authenticate. So let's go ahead and hit yes. And let's type in the password. Hit enter. Bam. There we there we're in to set up the static IP address. So the first thing we need to do is type in sudo space su. There we go. And then we're going to nano into uh, etc. And then basically what it, what it was it a uh, DHCP 
CD dot and then config. Okay, then we go there, hit enter, and we're gonna go all the way down, all the way down, all the way down. Now, I understand that technically I could go ahead and basically add these lines at the very end, but I'm just gonna go ahead and just technically take this out on this one. Uh, let's see the routes. Yeah, so the routers and the domain name. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a couple of changes. So static IP address, what I want it to be is a one dot, mm, let's do a one dot 220. Let's just basically say it's a 220. Uh, it's gonna be a CIDR 24, which is fine. So usually this is the, the default that usually every single network out there technically has. So just go ahead and make sure that the IP address is within your network scope. And of course that you're using an IP address that isn't inside of your DHCP pool. So static routers. So here I already know that my gateway is 192.168.1.1. Uh, static domain naming servers. So here I'm gonna take, let's take this out and I'm gonna add the other domain for Google. So it'd be the 8.8.4.4 .8 and then of course space.8.8.8.8 .8 .8 .8. uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take this out and that is technically it so that's all we need at this point hit control x you want to save it yes and then hit enter and we're good to go so now let's go ahead and reboot the workstation so for the static IP address to go right ahead and basically apply, we need to go right ahead and reboot it. How I do it is just basically hit INIT space six. So let's go right ahead and hit enter. Now let's go right ahead and ping this IP address. So if I ping it, technically I shouldn't be able to ping it anymore if the static IP address actually took. So I'm just gonna go ahead and wait. See if anything comes up, which most likely it probably won't. Now, what I should be doing, to tell you the truth, is I should be pinging the new address. So let's go ahead and ping the new address. And boom, there it is. So now it it's actually online with the static IP address. So let's go ahead and clear that. And uh, let's see, is it? No, CLS. I always get confused with the Linux commands. Okay, so let's go ahead and SSH back into the Raspberry Pi. So SSH and then Pi at, and then the new static IP address. Oops. Hit enter. Yes, go ahead and of course authenticate. And there we go. So we're back in. So now we need to go ahead and run a certain command to go ahead and get the Open Media Vault running. So let's go ahead and get that command. Uh, for you, you could, you know, I'm not going to, show it on the screen or anything like that, you could actually go into the description and then just copy paste it. Actually, before we run that command, let's go ahead and do sudo space su. And there we are, there we are. So now we're actually running everything as uh, root. So now all you gotta do is just basically copy that command. So there it is. And hit enter. Now, it's technically gonna go right ahead and basically download everything that it needs. So at this point, just walk away and uh, just, you know, go ahead and take a break because this will take a couple of minutes to complete. So we'll go right ahead and see you in a little bit. All right, so most likely you're gonna go right ahead and see this uh, message that it states, IP address may change and you could lose connection if running this script via SSH. So I did lose connection for a short bit, but after that, basically it just came back up online. So um, yeah, let's just keep on waiting until this completes. Okay, so it looks like everything technically went through. Now I did lose connection as soon as I tried to actually interact with the terminal once again. So I already went in there and it looks like everything already finished. Um, so let's go ahead and see if we're able to get into the Open Media Vault uh, web interface. All right, so I have Firefox open. Let's go ahead and type in that IP address. So it's gonna be 192.168.1.220. Hit enter and there we go. So Open Media Vault is set up. So let's go ahead and get in there. The username by default is gonna be admin and then the password is gonna be Open Media Vault. So Open Media Vault. 
and then log in. And there we go. So we're we're there. Now, one thing I'm going to do is uh, I still haven't connected I still haven't connected uh this um, little thumb drive. So let me just, let me go ahead and do that right now. So, let's go ahead and start configuring Open Media Vault to go ahead and actually, you know, become a NAS. So, first thing I want to do is um let's go ahead and create a user first. So, we're going to go over here to users and let's see. It's going to be user and as you can already see, the the actual Pi account is already there. But I'm going to want to create another one. So let's go ahead and create a new one. This one, I'm going to go ahead and name it just user. And let's go ahead and do a, let's do a security password. Let's do, there we go, configure. All right. And on the groups. So here, we're gonna go ahead and scroll down until we see, where are you? There it is, Samba Share. So we're gonna go ahead and add this user to Samba Share. There it is. At this point, now we could go ahead and hit save. Now it's gonna go ahead and tell you pending configuration changes. Let's go ahead and just basically apply them. And then, uh, are you sure you wanna apply the configuration changes? Yes. So now that that user is added, let's go ahead and basically take care of the actual hard drive. So let's go ahead and go into storage and then we're going to go into disk. And as you can see, so it is picking up right here, the micro SD right here. So this one's already configured, so we don't have to mess around with this one, but it is picking up the actual thumb drive itself. So. Here we go. So that's exactly where we're going to go ahead and do. Uh, for this one, let's go ahead and just basically wipe it. And uh, are you sure you want to go ahead and wipe the device? All data will be lost. Yes, that's fine. Uh, here, we're going to go ahead and do just a, a quick wipe. So let's just do that real quick. And yeah, there it is. So finish pretty fast. Next thing we need to do is let's go ahead and go into file systems. All right, and next thing we need to do is go ahead and click on this uh, plus sign. So this will go ahead and basically uh, format the actual thumb drive. So let's go ahead and click on that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and basically use uh, ext4. Uh, it's up to you, whatever you know file format you want to go ahead and use. I know a lot of people use uh, the btrfs uh, and as well as uh, the xfs. So just for this tutorial, I'll just use uh, this one. Now let's go ahead and select the drive. So as we can see, we have uh, the USB thumb drive. So select on that, click on save. Now at this point, it's gonna go right ahead and basically just start reformatting the hard drive. Now I will tell you this, um, if you do have a, a bigger drive, uh, it is gonna take a lot longer. So just FYI on that. Alrighty, so there we go. So the thumb drive is uh, technically already formatted. So let's go ahead and close. Okay, so now at this point, let's go ahead and mount it. So let's go ahead and select the hard drive. And at this point, that is, yeah, that's all we need. So hit save. There it is. So we do have it mounted and it is online. So let's go ahead and, you know, apply pending configuration changes. Hit on yes. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and set up a share. So let's go to shared folders. And here, let's go ahead and create a new share. So name, uh, name of the share for me, let's just go ahead and just do regular share file system. So we could go ahead and basically find the thumb drive, select that. So uh, at this point, this is just going to be how you're going to look at it once you're actually on Windows. That's fine. Underneath here, you could go ahead and set permissions. So here you have, a, you know, various options to go ahead and do permissions for me. Usually what I always try to do is um, I try to give the users just read only, but just for this tutorial, uh, I'm going to go ahead and change it a little bit. So let's go ahead and do uh, administrator read, write, and then let's do users read, write, and then others no access. So let's go ahead and select that. And at that point, uh, we don't need to input any tags, which is fine. And let's go ahead and hit save. Of course, once again, uh, Open Media Vault wants to go ahead and apply the changes. Go ahead and just do that. Hit yes. Okay, we're almost there. 
So now that we have everything technically set up, we need to go ahead and enable SM the SMB service. So let's go ahead and go into services. Let's select the SMB right here. Go into settings. And we're going to go ahead and enable it. This will technically enable uh, the work group. Uh, I just keep it, you know, just default is fine. Everything else, I usually leave uh, this default. So that's technically it for here. So we can hit save. There we go. And then pending configuration changes. That's fine. Let's go ahead and apply it one more time. Hit yes. All right. So there we go. So SMB is technically already enabled. So let's go ahead and actually, I want to go ahead and check one thing. So I want to go ahead and go into the sharing portion. And yeah, so yeah, I completely forgot. So let's go ahead and add that. So uh, share enabled. Okay, there it is. So we do see the actual share itself. So let's select that. So everything here, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and just leave it by default. You could go right ahead and mess around with it if you want. You know, you could go right ahead and, you know, enable inherit ACLs or inherit permissions if you'd like. Uh, but for right now, technically, I'll just go ahead and leave it like that. You can also do uh, add, you know, allowed host as well as deny uh, or add a deny list uh, for hosts that you don't want them to actually get into technically this share right here. So at this point, hit save. Okay, so before I hit apply, I just want to go ahead and show you. So it is enabled, the share is active, and public is set to no, and it is browsable. So let's go ahead and hit apply, hit yes. Okay, so there we go. So that should be it. So one thing I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and basically reboot the actual Raspberry Pi. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Configure, and yes. Okay, perfect. So... I'm going to wait for this thing to reboot and then I'll go right ahead and show you exactly how to get into the actual uh, share that we just created. Okay, so now let's go ahead and access that share. So let's go ahead and bring up a run command. So if we hit uh, Windows and R on your keyboard and let's do, uh, what is it, backslash, backslash, and then 192.168.1.220 because that was a static IP address we used. Hit enter. And bam, so we're asked for credentials. So let's go ahead and use not the Pi credentials, but let's use that user that we created. So it's gonna be user. And then let's go ahead and type in the password. At this point, you could go right ahead and click on remember this credentials and then hit okay. And there we go. So you're able to see that the share is there. So if I double click on it, I should be able to access it. Now let's go ahead and start adding some files or let's see if we can create some files. So we're going to right click, you know, and then let's just do a folder. Let's just do uh, rename it to this is a share test. Hit enter. There it is. And then let's go ahead and create, uh, let's go ahead and create a text file and then just name it test. Go in there. And this is a test. Save it. Close it. And let's see if it's still there. There we go. So we're we're good to go. Alrighty, everybody. So that's it. Uh, so this is a very simple way that you could go ahead and create, you know, basically a Raspberry Pi into a little NAS. Now, um, this is, you know, just kind of like in a smaller skill sort of thing. But uh, if you want to go ahead and basically learn a little bit more about, you know, maybe using an actual computer on how to set this uh, this type of stuff up, uh, you could go ahead and basically view some of my videos. I know I've done one for, I think, what was it, like my uh, 32 terabyte uh, backup server uh, that technically you could go ahead and check, check out that video, as well as you could go ahead and basically check out the video for my home server as well. Now, for that one, I'm actually using Windows 10 to go ahead and basically perform the shares, but... At the end of the day, I mean, you can actually use uh, Open Media Vault on an actual computer yourself. So you could go right ahead and follow these steps completely, and you could go right ahead and basically deploy it on an actual desktop computer or laptop. Alrighty, well, thank you very much for watching. I really do hope you uh, enjoyed the video and you actually learned something. Uh, and like always, we will catch you on the next one.